Hi everyone, welcome to my brand new booktube channel, Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. I'm Alice, I've got way too many books and this is going to be a video all about my TBR for May and the 1900 to 1950 readathon. Oh, and I've got a lovely big pile of books for it. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to my new channel. Um, my name's Alice. I have currently got 216 books that I haven't read on my giant TBR. I need to do something about this and uh, first of all I have stopped myself buying any books and second of all I thought that I would try some challenges. So today I'd like to talk to you all about the 1900 to 1950 readathon which is being hosted by Katie over at Books and Things. Um, I'll link to her announcement video in the description down below and I hope you'll go and check her channel out. This is my very first readathon, I've never done one before. When I saw Katie's video I was immediately excited to try this challenge. Um, it's taking me a little bit outside of my comfort zone um, because I don't read a lot of books from 1900 to 1950 although that era does contain the golden age of the detective story I'm a huge Agatha Christie fan so you will spot something by Agatha Christie in this list so to find my TBR for this challenge I went and raided my shelves and I actually found a surprising amount from this time period um, first of all I'll tell you about the five challenges um, that Katie has set for this readathon. The first one is to read a book that was published between 1900 and 1950 from the country you are from. I'm from England and nearly all of the books in my TBR actually are coincidentally also from England so that one is covered. The second challenge is to read a book that was published from 1900 to 1950 from a different country and I have managed to find one or two books that would meet this criteria. The third challenge is to read a genre classic. As I've mentioned I am a fan of classic crime so this one should be no problem either. The fourth challenge is to read something from this time period that is not a novel. We'll be coming to what I've chosen in my book stack in a moment. Fifth challenge is to read something set during or exploring World War I or World War II. Um, and I've managed to find one book that covers that prompt. The final challenge for this readathon um, is a bonus challenge and that was to read a book from every decade. I've tried to cover this, some decades I've got lots of options. Without any further ado, let's take a look at this lovely book stack. I'm very excited about it. So first up we have A Little Princess uh, by Frances Hodgson Burnett. Um, I haven't ever read this book, although I do remember owning a copy when I was younger. This one is actually not from my own shelves, it's borrowed from my mum, but I have had it in my house for quite a long time and I haven't read it yet. I'll hopefully be getting on with reading this one in the month of May. Um, this was published in 1905. Um, I really enjoyed reading The Secret Garden last year, um, so I'm hoping that this will be just as good. The second book I have picked up from my shelves is The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This was published in 1908. Um, this is one that I'm definitely going to try to read in May um, because I have very fond memories of having this read to me as a child. I'm looking forward to reading all about Toad of Toad Hall and his friends Ratty and Badger and Mole. I think this should be a really enjoyable fun read that will re hopefully remind me of my childhood. The next book on the pile is Anne of Green Gables. I'm not sure if I will get to this one this month. It's one that I'm not feeling quite as enthusiastic about. Um, I don't know why really, but I've never read Anne of Green Gables and I'm not really that excited to read it now. Um, but if I could get to it, that would get a book off my TBR, so that would be good. Um, as far as I know, it's uh, just a book about Anne and her adventures. Um, 
it says on the back here, Anne is an orphan but has always dreamt of being part of a proper family. So when she's chosen to go and live with the Cuthberts, she couldn't be more excited. But the Cuthberts wanted a boy to help them on the farm, not a girl. They absolutely cannot keep her. Hmm. We'll see if I will get to this one. It's also published in 1908. On to the crime classics next. We have Bulldog Drummond by Sapper. This was first published in 1920 and it's from a set that I have by Atlantic Books of Crime Classics. Um, it's all about um, Captain Hugh Bulldog Drummond um, who is hungry for adventure at the end of the First World War. Um, I may read this this month but I do have other books from the 1920s so it might be one that I don't get to. Um, we'll see how we go. Next we have the book that I'm going to read for challenge number four um, because it is not a novel, it's poetry and that is The Wasteland by T.S. Eliot. Um, this particular volume does contain other poems that are not from this time period um, but The Wasteland was published in 1922 so um, I will be reading that um, in May and I'm really looking forward to reading it because this has been on my TBR for a while and I was actually planning to read this next so um, this may be my first read for the month. Um, next we have another classic crime book, um, Dorothy L Sayers Unnatural Death. Um, I have already read one of Dorothy L Sayers Lord Peter Whimsey books called Whose Body um, which was the first in the series. This is the second in the series and I also have the third still to read. It was first published in 1927. Next we have the book that I'm planning to read both as a book from a different country and a book set during World War I. This is A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway which was published in 1929. I don't really read um, many books about war at all so possibly might find this one a bit difficult. I'm planning to read it near the beginning of the month so that my mum can also read it because she's planning to take part in the readathon too also be my first ever Hemingway so I'm interested to see how I get on with this. Back to classic crime we have Sweet Danger by Marjorie Allingham. This one is my only book I had available from the 1930s. It was published in 1933. I have read a very good book by Marjorie Allingham before so um, this will, shouldn't be a problem to read and I like the fact that it is in one of these classic penguin covers. At last we have something by Agatha Christie. Now I have read all of Agatha Christie's classic crime so it won't be a crime novel this month. Um, it's a book I'm very excited for, I've had it for a long time um, and I've been saving it because I've been reading all of the crime books and I haven't ever read one of Agatha Christie's books that she wrote under a pseudonym. She was writing these as Mary Westmacott. They are not crime related. This one's called The Rose and the Yew Tree. Um, this one's from 1947. Um, I will definitely be trying to read this one this month. Um, I'm quite excited to read something else by Agatha Christie. Now I've had a little bit of a break after her final crime fiction novel which I read in January. The last book I have on my book pile is The Franchise Affair by Josephine Tay. Um, this was written in 1949 and is another classic crime so we've definitely covered off the genre classics. Um, I may or may not get to this this month um, but it is meant to be a very good book. So you'll have noticed from the books that I've shown you that there is one decade missing and that is the 1910s. I don't have anything on my shelf at all from the 1910s. Luckily I've remembered that I do have an ebook downloaded already of The Lost World by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle which was published in 1912 so that will cover that decade for me um, and so hopefully I'll be able to complete all of the challenges and the bonus challenge but I also didn't want audiobooks to be left out. Um, I have an Audible subscription and I love listening to audiobooks especially while I'm cooking. Luckily I already had downloaded um, a George Orwell collection which contains Animal Farm and 1984, neither of which I've read before. They're read by Stephen Fry. They're both from the 1940s and I absolutely love listening to anything Stephen Fry reads me so I'm hoping these two 
will be no different. So that's everything on my possible TBR for the 1900 to 1950 readathon. Please do check out um, Katie's channel books and things down below. If you're also participating in the 1900 to 1950 readathon, I would love to hear from you and hear what's on your TBR. Um, I don't know if any of you are planning to read any of these same books. If you are, please let me know in the comments. I'll also be blogging about this readathon over on my blog, Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. So please do check that out in the links below. I hope you all enjoy this readathon if you're joining in with it in May. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.